Hi guys, I'm Ask Indigo and I'm coming to you today with a discussion about my journey, my life. I'm not really open about talking about much, but when I do, I start to talk and I feel some type of way I'm being guided to. So with that being said, I'm going to start off with the craziness of me having to leave to save a life to come back to a death which was one of the scariest and craziest things of knowing what my life was about to be headed towards and it hit home but that all led me back to trying to figure out life and where to place my feet and how to live my life and what to do in my life and how to just grow and be a person. Like, my whole life has basically lived behind a camera. And so it's hard for me to get on camera and talk in front of others, but I talk because I feel like there's a lot that I need to speak about and things that I need to express because outside of my personal little measly little world there is things that are happening realistically. My whole life I've been told that I was going to be some form of a prophet. When I was 13 years old spirit said I was going to be hated and rejected from the world. I believe that my whole life I had to live behind the scene and the illusion of what everyone else thought about who I was and what I wanted. So I decided to live my life behind that scene. I'm sorry for the meltdown, but spirit's saying to be honest. And I feel when spirit's listening to me it's just hard for me to be me in front of other people when there's so many people because I feel so many different energies and I feel so many different things. For the last 10 to 12 years of my life, I was hidden behind the scene. I was hiding the things that I knew about the world and everything that was going to happen within the world. Since I was a child, I always said that we were going to be living at the end times, one world religion, one world order, the end times. No one doesn't. Now look at the times. Now look at that. what's happening. Now look at the world. Like, now look at what the people are turning into. Like, we are living in a time where no one cares about your stupid little measly lives and the things that you're worrying about and how you live your world, you know, you have to understand that in order to receive these great things in your life, you literally have to work hard for it. You have to, what do you want for yourself? Like, look at yourself as an avatar in a mirror and say, okay, well, where do I start as a person? My whole life, I had been living behind a scene because I wasn't allowed to talk about things that was happening in the house. I wasn't allowed to speak about things that were happening in the world. I was supposed to be quiet and silent and not speak about things that I felt. And I felt a lot of different things, both living and not living. And a lot of messed up things were happening in the world. But I chose to keep going. I chose to be different. And there's so many things that I could talk about when it comes to horror stories but that's not the point of why I'm here because at the end of the day spirit says it's not about you and it's about others so I guess whatever contract I signed up to sign into with living in this world I signed up to be a hell of a freaking warrior because I live my life like according to maybe some of the law like I'm not perfect when it comes to being a person and I'm not perfect when it comes to making decisions in the world but I'm smart enough to like make the right decisions and be real with the decisions that I need to place in my own life. And I have to be non, like, you know, judgmental or, you know, 
take things personal because I have to look at other people and what other people want too. It's not about us and what we want. It's also about how to help others to, to not feel like they're excluded from everything. Like this world needs to come together because it's ugly and the people are ugly. And the, you know, there's so many different things happening in this world that's like, it's scary. Like I came when in 2010, when I came back to what was supposed to be a start of a new life, ended up being a freaking nightmare to the point where like, I didn't know what to do. And I had no backup, I had no friends, I had no family. It was very little few people that were there for me. And my child's, you know, uh, godmother was the only one that allowed me to like be in, in a place where that was safe and that could help me get on my feet because I was coming back and starting over. And it's not because I wanted to start over because I, you know, wanted to, it's because I had to, because I literally couldn't trust anybody in my life and I couldn't trust anything that was going on around me. So I had to control the only thing I had control over and that was myself. And so I chose to go back to a place that, although I was not happy going back, coming back home, you know, it was the only place that I knew that I was gonna be supported in with whatever decision I was about to make next. And that doesn't mean that it was easy because trust me, it was not easy. Like it was not easy. You know, I lived a life where, you know, I had to be really hush hush about the things that I was seeing within the household. I had to be very hush hush about the things that I was seeing within the spiritual world. I had to be hush hush about the things that I was seeing behind the scenes. Like I had to be hush hush about so many different things and I was a child. And then becoming an adult and having to live in this existence of like where you can't really be your own self because when you try to be yourself, you have others that want to live your life for you. They want to dictate how your life's supposed to be or what you're supposed to be or how you're supposed to live your life or what you're supposed to do. Like, can I live my own life? Can I do what I want to do with my own decisions based on how I want to do those things? Like, or do I have to live based off of other people's opinion or expression of who I am? So I decided to come back and fight really hard to find my footing to figure out how to be stable and do the things that I needed to do to get wherever I needed to be because life was not easy at all. Like it was rough. Like I came back to physically nothing. Like I literally jumped ship. I was at one place. It wasn't working there for a while. Things weren't going the way I, I was expecting them to be. Not to mention, I find out that the person there, it seems like I was dealing and that's going to be a whole other situation from further from the story. But there's like, there was a portion of my life where I was, um, I want to tell you about maybe, and, and nothing is ever a coincidence in my life. It's never a coincidence. It's just always weird shit that happens in my life that I literally can't make up. But I might've been nine years old and I remember somebody knocking at the door and I remember going to the door and saying, okay, <laughs> I'll go answer the door. Nobody's answering the door, so I'm going to go answer it. And so I go and answer the door, and all of a sudden, like, no one's there. Okay, so I go look down, and there's, like, a freaking black cat at the foot of the stair, at the foot of the step of the stairs of the door. The foot of the step of the stairs, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, um, and the cat, the, the cat was just laying there, like, it was dead, dude. It was, it was dead. Like, somebody had gutted it, and just laid it on the doorstep and I was like what the hell and I'm freaking out and I'm saying I'm hollering my grandfather and I'm like you know hey somebody you know somebody I'm yelling at hey, whoever's in the house like you know there's something in half at the store at the doorstep and it's scaring me and my grandfather came and it was, oh my god it was crazy he took it up and he put it in the bag and he took it away from the house and but that was an omen like whatever that was was definitely an omen like, whoever knows what that omen is, like, I know a lot of things about spirituality, and I know a lot of things about, like, spiritual stuff, but when it comes to stuff like that, like, stuff like that freaks me out, man. So, like, I don't really know, like, because that's not spirit. Okay, so when it comes to spirit, there's a lot of things when it comes to spirit. Like, you're, you're either born with some kind of gift or given it, granted it when you're a child because of great passage, because of a near-death experience, or 
you know, you get it because you ask for demonic spirits to basically give it to you to do whatever it is that you're trying to do. And then we call that black magic and brujeria and santeria. Well, mm, santeria is a little different. Um, um, voodoo, voodoo, like, now santeria is a little different because that stuff, it's more uh, Spanish religion. And that's kind of my, like, you know, the cleansing and the cleanings and the, and the purifications. Now that's a little different. Now, if you're if you're butchering things, then you're that's 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 the that's the that's the you know how do you bring life when you're taking life? That's how does how does that work? Um, I mean, it does work when you're talking about spirit, cause spirit, I could tell you some stories, you know, further down the line of me getting comfortable with talking on screen and stuff like that. But like, hey, babes, hey, hey, everybody, hey, you know, yeah. So hi, uh, so. Um, spirit, you know, works in a lot of different ways when it comes to me and how I feel. I was having a nervous breakdown a little minute ago because, like, when I feel spirit, I'm sorry, I feel spirit and spirit wants to start talking and doing all kinds of stuff. But spirit wants me to touch on some things, some topics, but, um, I'm also, you know, picking up on energies too. So, like, we're, 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 we're spiritual things and I'm going to lean back to what I was, I was going to with this topic. So, um, that, you know living life wasn't wasn't easy in in my little small little world that i was living you know as as that child like i wasn't allowed to do a lot of things or say a lot of things and it created a monster within me because i became a behind the scene monster if people that know me know me <laughs> to be a behind the scene monster like i'm i'm a person that i don't really hide who i am or or sugarcoat what i have to say and and all of that so coming coming back from living a life in florida into 2010 to uh finding out that one of my cousins is killed and it hits the news that was like a big thing for me but then you know um also having to live above my mom's house and i love my mom but there's a lot of history with my mom that's not the healthiest of, of situations it's not that she's bad and it's not that she's a bad person, but it's, she's got habits and she's got things that are going on with her that sadly it will never change. That's habits I don't want to be around. Um, and it's not like she can really help it because she also has a learning disability because she got it when she was like two years old, so it doesn't help. And so she also ended up getting some like, um... Let uh lead damage in her mind so now it made her illiterate she's not able to understand like everyone else that doesn't mean she's stupid because she's far from stupid but you know it's crazy because it's like i have this love for my mom that is undescribable but at the same time she irritates the hell out of me because of the way she is and she can't help it so it's like i want to love her and shake her at the same time <laughs> because it's like I want her to change her ways but at the same time I want her to see her ways and she will never understand her ways because her, of her learning disability and so all you can do is love her and and hope that she'll eventually find a way and that doesn't help because if you're around the wrong people you're never gonna grow and you're never gonna like understand what the right things are because you're around all the negative stuff like if you're around people who are negative all the time and if you're around people who are like down vibrational people all the time and if they're always like people that don't want to be you know if they don't want to talk about things that are like positive or you know things that are like uplifting or make you feel like in a good mood then you got to move yourself away from that vampire energy into a space that makes more sense so in like 2010 coming back in 2010 like moving in t toward 12 11 12 or 13 all the way up until 14 like i was in i was trying to figure myself out i was trying to figure life out and i was trying and i was in my 20s and then and i had kids and i i had a crazy family and i got a lot of crap going on in the family and okay cool so you know i was i was doing the check i was doing the checklist of all the the craziness i was going to get myself into when i come back to home base and i I don't, I don't know, man. Like, I just didn't want... I didn't... It's not so much that I didn't want. I didn't know what to expect when I came back. All I know is I needed help. I didn't care who I got the help from as long as it was positive And it got me to where I needed to be in the right direction because I wasn't trying to be a repeat of something that I'm trying to break. We're trying to break generational curses. So we got to break them right at the doorstep 
and and not take them with us and like i had i said I, mm, i'm not gonna stay in the situation where like repeating a cycle of like craziness craziness and then some more craziness and then we're gonna we're gonna dash it with a we're gonna we're gonna dash it with a little bit more craziness and then you know and go from there like i i said something has to change and i knew this from a child that something had to change but like 20 from 2010 to 20 like 13 and 14 i life was life got tough like it was tough it was tough and and i i was like in a war between i didn't like my kids they were stressing me out then and one of them i <laughs> One of them, I threatened a refrigerator, okay? One of them irritated me to a point in 2013 where I told the little sucker if you, in front of the, the other two, I swear, we all started busting up laughing in the kitchen. And so I told them, I said, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to throw the refrigerator at you. I was so mad at him. And we all stood there. My, young, my oldest son, he looks at me and he says, Mom, can I interrupt you? I said, what do you want? And he goes, you can't even pick up the refrigerator. I said, if you don't get your stupid away from me. I was so irritated. I was going to throw a And I said, do you want to get thrown out of the window? And he said, he said, no, he, right. Then go away, go away. And my daughter, my daughter used to irritate me all the time. And man, I, I love, I love my children so much. But they also get on my nerves. I'll do everything and anything for them, but at the same time, go away and leave me alone. Cause I don't have time for the craziness. Like they drive me insane. So, and it doesn't change as you as they get older. It doesn't change as it get, as they get older. It just becomes. So if you were having anxiety before, expect to have a heart attack when you get to this point of when they become like freaking adults because like that I, I don't know what to expect when they hit adults hey <laughs> thank you thank you when 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 you get adults cuz that becomes really stressful so like think between 11 uh, 2010 to 2014 like I'm already going through so many different things I'm trying to figure out life trying to figure out where I'm going to live trying to take care of these raggedy kids try <laughs> Try to figure out how to stay supported and stay up in the world and not fall apart. Get support. That wasn't happening. I was lucky if I even got some damn support. And then if I did get support, I was being reminded that I had the support. That's not encouraging. I get that. Thank you. And I'm, I'm gratitude. But I don't want to hear that all the time. Especially when I'm working late hours that I have no control over. So I can get the money I can get so that I can get out of your house or so that I can get out of your space. And for the ones that didn't complain and give me a hard time, salute to you. I definitely I am gracious for you because a lot of you know who you are if you're still, you know, watching me or whatever. Um, but like it has always been like a hard situation with me with like figuring things out. And it's not so much that I didn't know what to do because I did and I wasn't a you know, a slow person or a person that didn't understand because those things are completely different. Like, you could be doing things and you're just not trying to look for the information or you just don't understand and it's hard for you to understand. There's two different things. Like, I struggle with both. I deal with dyslexia. I freaking have our problem. I can't deal with people. I have anxiety. There's a lot. I have a lot of issues. I'm a girl in a plastic bubble because I've never been able to live my life and the short little life that I had was cut short because of my health. And so, 20 years, two decades, you're kind of strapped in a house and you don't know really how to talk to anybody so i ended up meeting people the best way that i could meet people with the way i can meet people because when i came back i also came back with health issues like when i left i left with minor little ticks and problems but when i came back i came back with like the issues getting worse to the point where like i didn't know what was really going on with me and i got real help when i finally got back to, to home base and so, like, and there were so many different things happening. It was crazy. But I ended up finding, getting the doctors that I needed also in 2012 um, and 13. Because in 2012 and 13, um, that doctor ended up being told to me by um, a friend of mine who worked at the clinic. And when we worked at the clinic, um, I told them, you know, I need help. I'm having issues with my health. And I'm at the point where, like, I'm really depressed and I'm having issues with keeping myself like going because like it's 10 years I was already fighting so 
it's crazy because it's like from 10 to 11 to to 12 years time like prior to this next timeline of like 10 to 12 years time like i was literally going through it because prior to that i was dealing with my health trying to figure it out Chad was already 10 years into like even getting answers really really to what was falling apart in my body because it took 10 years for like my body to fall apart and have all kinds of issues and um and like i was so freaked out that i was like am i like and i had am i dying like i had so many doctors that were literally like saying like it's this it's that it's th so i'm i'm over here freaking out because i'm like okay well it could I can have all, any kind of freaking problem then. I should, I guess I'm guessing what the issue is today. And I finally ended up getting a, a doctor to say what was going on with me that 10 years later. And so that's the 10 years prior to this 10 year span, which is the two decades. Like, I, okay, I struggle with my health. I struggle with finding a place to stay. I'm struggling with knowing who to trust. I'm struggling with even understanding people to begin with. I'm struggling with, I don't even give a damn at this point. Like, I just, I need a place to go. I need some kind of support for now. I need to get myself uh, back on my feet. I'm coming back to nothing, apparently. And I need to just figure out life and do what I need to do from here. That was that was my goal plan, and I pretty much, I shot for that. And I ended up above my mom's house. And that was a damn nightmare because she drove me insane. Every day with her tactics, it was always a new thing, and it was very stressful dealing above my mother that still has her issues. And I love my mama, and I know she can't help it, but, like, damn, like, please, if you're not going to respect my boundary, that's a boundary for me. If you're not going to respect my boundary, then at least keep your space or don't call me with all that. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I was at a point where, like, I was figuring out on who I wanted to trust and who I didn't want to trust, and then I ended up, um, I had a lot of support from my son's dad. So my older son's dad, he was very supportive. We were good friends. Like we weren't in a relationship, but you know, cause he already had his life, but we were good friends. Um, because he was my support team and I have a child with you. When I was going through all the craziness, you were the only one that helped me with our child. Um, but that doesn't mean that it was all peaches and cream. Cause there was a lot of craziness that was happening behind the scenes for my child in this situation that he was in with his dad, that my dad and I, really had no um no um control over like we had no control over what was happening so all we could do was pray on it and then a lot of things were being exposed and then they, we were handling it the best that we could handle it and like it was hard for us to kind of like handle the the situation but we ended up our our, our friendship is still tagged we're, we're still good co-parents up until this day um, life's been really great. I have a lot of tickling in my nose, which means that spirit is trying to get me to be quiet or shut up because usually this happens when I get a tingle. So, so I'm an empath and the way I work with spirit is when spirit is trying to speak or tell me something or basically, um, expose something, I get some kind of a tingle within this space right here. It vibrates and, and makes me feel some type of way. That also lets me know that there's some kind of like an energy around. Um, so there's definitely like, I feel there's something around. And so I definitely feel it. But, you know, 20, 2010 to 2014, it was crazy because that year also, like I said before, like I came back to a relative, you know, um, being on a live. And it, it, I find out, you know, I'm just coming back. And all of a sudden, like, you know, la, 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 la. I wake up, you know, to me and my uncle. We're watching TV and the news is on. And, you know, I can only play something for the moment. And all of a sudden, guess what? Right. The news is on. Oh, snap. That's family. Whoa. It was big enough to hit the news. Like, that was a lot for me coming back in 2010. And then having to still meet, go to go hang out with the family. I don't really talk to the family. We're going to go hang out with the family because I'm not allowed to be myself or talk about anything that's going on in my life because it's always going to be something. Like, I don't, don't ask me for nothing unless it's something positive. I don't like to be in the drama. I don't have time for the nonsense. I don't got time for the craziness. And I don't want to fight nobody. And I don't have time for the fights. And I don't got time for the clown stuff. Like, I don't... That's energy that's wasted on vampiric stuff. Like, people that like all that stuff, they're people that I call vampires. Like, they like all the toxic stuff. And, man, you could, you could tell a vampire a mile away. 
and I lived above the mat of vampire in 2014. That was my grand, but that was my mother. We're not gonna talk about my grandma's house yet, but that was my mother's house, and you know, that house had a lot of um, spirit energy too. So like, not only was I dealing with like my mom's craziness, the house was also showing um like para paranormal um activity. You know, showing like poltergeist activity. You know, showing like we were recording in the house and stuff, and um, I had a recorder on my phone and it was recording the just the silent house and we were in the kitchen one day I swear to you and my son was sitting in the kitchen you we were on, he was on one side and I was on the other and <laughs> and we're talking and because we're eating off this little paper plate first thing in the morning and out of nowhere my plate slides on its own like it literally slides and moves over like you can physically tell somebody pick it up and slide the thing because there is no draft there's no wind there's nothing to make it move nothing we weren't doing anything we weren't even moving our hands um and it slide and you caught me on camera literally saying the plate moved and my son looked too because he noticed it too and he was like right i know i wasn't tripping i'm right 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 so we saw what we saw then later on that day we were recording again and we ended up hearing um noises and voices and stuff like that so we caught it and we caught we caught the voices like i guess i was yelling at my son or something like that and you can hear me yelling at my son but then in the background you literally hear somebody like telling me telling him to stop it like it was a woman's voice and the woman was saying stop it and that freaked us out then there was another time where they had <laughs> where my my i had just got my younger son back with me and from florida and he had just came back with me and we're literally in the house and out of nowhere um he's we're hearing like these weird voices coming around the house and he tells me and he's never seen this house a day in his life before this child just got here and first time ever having a bath anything being with, like it's crazy so he comes in his house and we have him in the bathroom and he's he's freaking out he's saying mom i don't want to i don't want to be in here and i'm said why and he said because um i could see there's something in the bathroom i said something in the bathroom he said so there's something in the bathroom i said what's it look like he said it's a boy i said okay well what's wrong with him he said his head it's got something wrong with the side of his head i said okay now mind you as he's telling me what he's seeing and describing what he's seeing the lady from next door had told me that in the apartment that I was living in, in the bathroom, that somebody had slipped and busted their head in the bathroom. I guess they died. But this is something that she told to me. She lives next door. And my son had just arrived from a whole other state. So... <laughs> he's never heard the story before so for him to be telling me he's seen what he's seen told me yeah he see whatever he's seeing um and i was like uh yeah so that wasn't the first experience we had in that house in between the, the the time i was there in 2013 and 14 like i was in my mom's house for a short period of time and i mean outside of her craziness like i was dealing with paranormal activity in the house and i ended up having a cat and the cat something scared the bejesus out of my cat to the point where the cat okay my cat was a Siamese cat and it was fat but this mother sucker and it's and she stopped going under my bed for a really long time and this mother sucker out of nowhere i'm telling you she ran under my bed she managed to get all the way deep in the corner and she said oh hell no nah, i'm not coming out you can i'm not doing it so i had to <laughs> So I had to go and take her out and help her and say, okay, what's going on? So I grabbed and I put it on my chest and I go and I walk towards the hallway to where, because it's a separation between the kitchen and the living room and it's a hallway and then it's a bathroom and then it's like two rooms that's on the side because there's a like dividing door between the two spaces between the kitchen and the, the living room and dining room. And she would not go in the dining room because there was something that was scaring the hell out of her that she was looking at and every time i would try to bring her towards the living room she was like clawing her face and her hands in my chest like it was the craziest thing and i'm like what is she looking like and it's crazy because like i'm an empath so i feel things but like i wasn't 
I wasn't peeping what she was peeping. Like, I wasn't getting what she was getting. So I'm over here looking around like, what does she see that I don't see? And I usually see and feel spirits like that. So what's up? Something scared the hell out of her. Cool. So I said, okay, cool. So I, I moved her Kubo and her stuff to the space. And I said, I'll give her some time. So as she's in this time, I'm like, okay, every time she will walk up to the threshold, she'll stand at the doorway and then she'll go and she'll look at the space and she'll look, I feel sick just thinking about it. And she'll go and she'll look around at the space and she'll be looking up and she'll just be petrified. I'll be like, what is she looking at? And I'll be wondering what she's looking at. And I, said, I don't know. To this day, I still don't know. what. I think she saw something that was demonic and I just wasn't picking up on the energy, to be honest. Like, I really think that like whatever she was seeing, because whatever it was was big. Like, she was looking at something that was big. Because as she would, she would literally crawl her face in my arm and my shoulder and literally be like, whoa. Like, she was seeing something that scared her to death. Um, not to death, but, like, scared her, like, to where she was, like, really petrified to go over there. It literally took her, like, like two and a half months to finally go into the, um, into the dining room. So, like, whatever was in the house had been in there for like a minute man because she wasn't she wasn't trying to go in that space it was scaring her she was it was she was petrified and we nobody was in her space she was completely by herself because we were in the kitchen and it was me and and some other person and we were talking in the kitchen and we were you know it was late at night and all of a sudden she's in the living room by herself and she's freaking out and she's literally making all the cat weird screaming noises all by herself and stuff and all of a all of a sudden in the middle of the, the the dark she goes flying from that space all the way to where we're at and shoots past us and goes into my room and goes under my bed petrified so whatever was in that space was definitely like not supposed to be in that space it was like definitely something that was like not on our realm like not physically there like it was definitely a spirit or something but at the same time, like, she was also, like, warning me because she was always say, uh, sitting at the foot of the bed. She was always looking at things and keeping an eye on things and tracking, like, the things that were happening. And she would, like, let me know, like, whatever was happening um, that, was, that I wasn't seeing, like, around the house. And I was being spiritually attacked by so many different things. It was ridiculous. There were so many noises coming in the house, par paranormal activity. Things were moving. It was crazy. So, at this time, I ended up finally getting with my person, the person that I was going to be with at the time. Um, and this person ended up betraying me. And basically, having a whole new life on outside of me. And I was finding out that I was getting sick and so all this all the things that were leading the 10 years of leading up to like figuring out what was going on with my health is because it was 10 years of like me struggling with my body about to go through some kind of cancer and then I, then i get hit with some being betrayed but i get the bad news about my health and being betrayed by someone who's supposed to you know honor and respect me and then you go and have a child on me and at the worst time of my life and then <laughs> I said, nope. So I went and I filed a divorce and I did my thing and I lived my life. And at that time, my aunt had told me that, that the person that I am, that a person that I was with, I was going to not be with them anymore. But the person that I was going to end up being with was going to be someone from my past and that I will be when I was 39 years old. And that's a whole other part of the story, which we'll get to when we get further down the timeline. But in 2014, like, you know, I knew that this person wasn't doing the right by me and I felt it and then it was exposed and I seen it. And so I did what I had to do for myself and my life. And I moved on with my, in my life from there and from my mother's craziness and possession in that house to me going from all this that I had to just undetoxify from. I ended up moving above my grandmother's house. And then when I was above my grandmother's house, my grandmother's house was another cycle of craziness because then we're dealing with a whole neck of spirits above there and all the craziness that I was dealing with within her house and all the stuff that was happening there. Um, and that was a whole other story too because that was a lot of like unpacking of trauma 
that I was trying to unpack with her that was hard for us to talk about. And it, it's still hard for us to talk about this day. That's why I talk about the baggage burdens and labels. Um, and, you know, leading on to 20, uh, 20, 30, 2014 all the way until 2016 is basically me trying to rediscover myself, figure myself out. I ended up going through another round of stupidity by trying to trust somebody and let someone in and it was a bad case of deja vu by allowing them to do the repeat of what the last person did and i had already confided in this person to not do these things or at least like let me know because i was already dealing with my health and this person went and did the same exact thing so i in my mindset said well okay well i'm not I'm not deserving of love and I'm not deserving of being accepted or wanted or appreciated by someone because I was sick and and because I had no control over it. Like it's one thing to have had control over your own health or to have created a health habit or something that's wrong within your health that you did to yourself. That's something completely different. That means whatever is happening to you is because you did that to yourself. Not that it means that you deserve it because I don't think that anybody should deserve anything, but if the if that's what you d did to yourself then i i'm sorry that's what you did to yourself be angry at yourself you know i can't say that you deserve it but you did that to yourself so um i was definitely in a in a in a life cycle of like a lot of things that were happening within my life that i had no control over and i had to figure out how to get control by getting away from all those toxic situations so i ended up leaving that situation which was very toxic um, and heading towards like my my newfound self, <laughs> and that's when I ended up just being here with all of you, and you know, wanting to expose more about how I feel about life, and want, wanting to expose on how I feel about certain things that happened in my life, and what I've been through with people and experiences, because I've been through a lot of different things. I've that were a lot of different things. I would love to talk with other people about a lot of different things that I've experienced in my life. Um, and that's another reason why I say, like, we go towards doing things like therapy or becoming um, therapists or psychiatrists or or any of these roles that um, set, you up, set you up in a string of counseling because, like, we're really good at expressing or explaining or helping others to not go through that same cycle especially when we've gone through something that was not the greatest and when we can make it out of it okay is when we can talk about it to others so that others can kind of like get healed and and find peace from whatever they had experienced um and then break free and 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 make a new version a new mold of who they are so i'm you know i'm gonna be talking more about like the different things that I've experienced throughout my life because like outside of the the dealing with the cancer and outside of dealing with like the the bad marriages and and dealing with the baby scandals and dealing with the with the deceit and the you know the, I and I'm dealing with a lot of different things like you're talking about everything envy black magic we're talking about UFOs like I've seen it all like and and I for somebody that has seen a lot of different things that I can't explain, a lot of people would want to consider to label me crazy. Yeah, but when you're a therapist who happens to find a therapist to prove that you're not crazy, then I guess you're not crazy. Um, and that just proves that these things are real. They do exist. They do happen. People do go through these things, and they, they it does affect them. I went through something that was crazy. I will be talking about that soon at some point, or I will break down like, I went through seven days of craziness, and and I know I I was under some some kind of demonic attack. At the same time, I have discernment, and I was pre warned by Pastor's wife about this event that was going to happen, um, that I will be talking about as I go further on in, in this life story of unpacking what is called my life and the things I literally cannot make up. Um, and you know, UFOs, I we. Got, I got stories about that too and others have been there with me when we've experienced it and it's been some crazy details and I can prove it by just let's be in the same place at the same time with a beautiful clear sky and I'll be able to prove it um and there's a lot of things that it happens in the world that they say are not real but you also haven't met me and and you haven't asked me questions like who am I and what is it that I do and what do I know I know a lot of things I know a lot of things about a lot of different 
um, areas of life, from life, um, understanding life, how to manipulate life, use life, make it move. That, that's an alchemist, though. That's a whole different situation. You would have to understand what we are to understand what our purpose is. And a lot of the situations got nothing to do with us and everything to do with you. Um, <laughs> that's right. It's called a contract. Um, and I'll be able to unpack, like, a lot of these things when it comes to my life. Like, there's a lot of areas in my life about a lot of different things that I've had to experience when it comes to grief and envy and anger and greed and gluttony and, um, you know, being frustrated. And I have my own baggage burdens and labels and... There's a lot of things that I can experience um, with you and also express to you about, you know, what I know. Like, when I say a lot of things, we're going to get into a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I'm definitely going to break down. So, with my timeline and how I break down between the 2010 all the way until 2024, there's so many different things that hit within the scale I would love to to answer questions of, from you guys, and I would love for you guys to leave me comments and tell me, you know, what would what year would you like to hear about, or what would you like to know about, like what I experienced, like in between twenty ten to twenty twenty four, I have experienced UFO sightings, um, w with a lot of people. I even proved it a bunch of times. Um, I have been contacted by something, um, and I can teach you how to understand it as well. I call it source and spirit. Um, it's a simple little technique when you start to understand yourself. Um, I can tell you stories about, you know, experiences I've had with spirits and ghosts. You know, but I've had a lot of different experiences when it comes to those different things. Um, especially when it has come to spirit dreams, spirit dreams have exposed a lot of different things to me, especially when it comes to owls. One thing I will tell you, if you're a person who's having dreams with owls, expect to have a UFO sighting. And uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to see this big shiny object in the sky. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, you're literally going to see something come out of the sky. That's going to be a bright light. And it's not going to be like anything else. And it's not going to have sound or nothing. And it's just going to zoom through the sky. And it's going to be there. And then it's going to be not. Or you're gonna, it's going to be there. And you're going to be able to interact with it. If you know how to interact with it, I do. Um, and and there's a lot of stories I have about that too. But if you follow me, you'll definitely start to get me to release and unlock a lot of those stories. Or you can even ask me to explain a, a lot of those stories. And I can definitely express and touch on a lot of these topics. Um... And, I, you know, if I happen to have the, the people that are around when those things were happening, I would love to at least have their voices, <laughs> if not their faces, because a, a lot of them are like myself. We're, not, we're a camera shy. We don't really, really like to feel comfortable talking in front of camera. Um, and, you know, outside of that, you know, spirit dreams, we've had tons of those. I've had some weird occurrences the last couple of years. The one thing I could definitely tell you is um, two years ago, it's before I let you guys go, you know, two years ago, um, in, in the process of this timeline between 2010 and 2014, I was also having, um, like weird visions of owls that same year. We ended up seeing the UFO in the sky, which was sighted by the way, and it was a ball of light. Um, and then it had no sound movement. It had nothing. And then, then we, yeah, we got, some weird paranormal activity happening in the house and poltergeist stuff happening in the house and some weird creatures visiting inside the house and um weird activity like there was a lot of craziness happening within that time as well outside of like me trying to go to school full-time taking care of three kids working three part-time jobs like i was i was trying to be superhuman and and I forgot to live and be myself, and now I'm trying to figure that out by even expressing to any of you anything about anything, to be honest. Um, so just be proud of me that I'm even on the camera talking or doing anything, because I'm very fearful of being on the camera. Um, but 20, 20, 12, 2010 to 2014 was very a, a very roller coaster crazy year, because, I man, I experienced everything. on The, the only thing we haven't seen now... Is we haven't seen, um, you know, uh, the Mothman, and we haven't seen. Let me not go there because you know we're at the end times. So, um, you know what they say about the omens and the the blackenings of the windows and all that stuff. 
but that's for a whole another show um but yeah you know as long as you keep up with me i'll definitely keep telling these stories definitely tell me what you would love to hear about because i've given you options of things to definitely um get me to talk about because I, I definitely can tell you about some stories man i got a lot of stories to tell you about a lot of crazy stuff that's happened in my life that i literally cannot cannot make up i cannot make up my life um I'm going to leave you between 2010 and 2014 until I come back next time. And then I'll talk about from 2015 and 16 because that was a mess. That was that was a mess. Um, but, you know, 2010 to 2014 was definitely a, a very unique year. Definitely was a roller coaster um, years for me where I was having spirit dreams. And I was be I was beginning to get like my senses of spirit. So I was beginning to be able to hear spirit and see spirit and see pictures of spirit and what they were showing me as far as visions um i was beginning to try to understand um dreams and interpretation uh that year i was also going through like some kind of an awakening where i was getting some weird downloads and i didn't even understand what downloads were until the end of like 2014 and yet again that'll be a whole other story because that's activated and did something else um and but 2010 to 2014, a lot of downloads, a lot of crazy things. I'm telling you, there's a lot of crazy things. And and that wasn't the first time for the UFO uh, sightings. When, in 2013, 2014, at the end of 2014, is the first time we saw the sightings. I've been able to communicate with them and prove it to others since then. Um, man, it was a weird treat. There was a weird year of the, like, the birds just mag magically dying on their own weird wet we had weird weather that year like there was a lot there was ufo sightings like so many sightings that year the planet was going through a lot of different things that year oh my gosh oh my gosh i guess that that's pretty much it for now i'm just i'm trying to think and i'm saying there's a lot of more i, I could touch on uh but those don't co coincide to 20 10 to 2014 timeline so i guess i'm gonna leave it there <laughs> i'm asking to go i was just dropping on to kind of touch on a couple of things about the craziness i call my life <laughs>